Hi, I'm Mike Ketchell with Erie Tech. Today we're going to be discussing belt drive systems. So why discuss belt drive systems? Well, for every dollar of energy that you put into an electric motor that has a belt on the end of it, less the efficiency losses of that motor, that dollar of energy now goes through your belt drive. In 1997 and again in 2010, the government forced the motor manufacturers to increase motor efficiencies. For example, in 2010, the motors now cost 20% more to increase efficiencies by 0.5%. And this was cost effective in many applications. But there were no regulations on what happened to all that energy or cost once it got through the motor. So we can think of efficiencies as electrical cost, or we can think of them as the amount of work that you get out of your drive. Either way, we want you to get the most out of what you pay for. What actually is the purpose of a belt drive? Well, to transmit power from one shaft to another, to slow down or speed up the drivetrain, typically slow it down, and to increase the torque of the drivetrain. So speed down, torque up. So belts work on the wedge principle. There is a shiv or pulley as some people call it on the end of that motor shaft. And as the motor shaft turns, it pulls the V-belt into that shiv and wedges it between the flanges of that shiv. And that creates the torque. Normal efficiencies are 93% for wrap belts and 94% for raw edge belts because there is some slippage in the system. Belts must be properly tensioned to perform at this level. Proper tensioning requires not a thumb test, but a tension checking device at installation. Let's face it, my thumb pressure, your thumb pressure, and the thumb pressure of those around us are all different. So you can see in the pictures, there's a couple of different pressure checking devices. There's the elongation method, which is a tension finder. There's a deflection method called a tensiometer. And there's a frequency method. It's a much more intricate device and obviously measures the frequency as a belt runs. A survey of belt manufacturers over the years reveals that under tensioning is a major cause of belt drive problems. Belts must be properly tensioned at installation and because they're made of rubber and they stretch, tension again 24 to 48 hours later. And then check the tension again in another five or six months. The second part of a belt drive system is the shivs. Many people think that rubber cannot wear out cast iron. Oh, but it can. We discussed how belts must be properly tensioned, but they can't be properly tensioned in warm shivs. Improperly tensioned belts due to simple and proper tensioning initially or through worn shivs can reduce efficiency or work that you're getting from your system by as much as 10%. Remember that we just paid 20% more for that motor to give us 0.5% more efficiency? And in many instances, that was a good payback. A good rule of thumb is to replace your shivs every third time that you replace your belts. A better rule of thumb is to use your shiv gauge every time that you check your belts. For more help on how to check your shivs, please click on the link below. So what do these efficiencies mean in dollars and cents? Well, let's take an example of a 50 horsepower drive on an HVAC unit that runs two shifts per day, five days per week. The energy cost will be approximately $17,000 a year. That's right, $17,000 a year for this application. So how much of that $17,000 do you want to go up and smoke? The belts and shivs for that 50 horsepower drive, brand new, cost a little over $1,000. Payback on a new system can be a little over six months. Do you want your belt drive to give you 93 to 94% of that work? or 83 to 84% of that work. It's vitally important to inspect your shifts and tensioning on a regular basis. Now there is a way to increase efficiencies or work even more. That would be to use synchronous belts or timing belts on your application. Synchronous belts run approximately 98 to 99% efficient. Now these are not a cure-all for every application. They must be properly tensioned and aligned, even more so than V-belts. They need a solid base. They're best if they're connected to a motor that's run off a of soft starter or VFD because there's no slip in the system. Although there are many, many that are run off of motors that have started across the line. Now they should not be used where there's heavy shock load. There are hundreds of thousands of synchronous belts in use today. Don't let what I just said scare you away from them. 
In many applications, such as HVAC, where you have a solid mounting and you're using VFDs or soft starts, synchronous belts are a fantastic option. Let's face it, 10% of $17,000 can pay for a lot of drives, especially when it's 10% of that number year after year after year. For more information on belt drives, please call your local Erie Tech representative. Thank you for watching.